Hello once again, Chris Lee and Chase Robinson of Southeastern 16 here to talk about LSU and its path to victory in beating Texas A&M Saturday. Big game for both teams, the only two unbeatens left in SEC play. Chase, let's get right into the keys for the Tigers. And this one's simple, get in the red zone and then it gets interesting once you get, once you get there. Yeah, Texas A&M has, has made it hard on teams to get in the red zone uh, on the Aggies, and so I think that's something that LSU will will want to try to do. Uh, A&M is 12th in the FBS for fewest red zone chances by their opponents, and so they've they've done a, a remarkably well job of, of keeping uh, their opponents out of the red zone. Uh, so that's something LSU is going to want to do, and then kind of going past that a little bit and and these numbers kind of contradict themselves because yes Texas A&M has kept teams out of the red zone but when they have gotten in the red zone 14 of 16 times the teams have scored so if you're LSU yes you want to get in the red zone but when you get in the red zone you want to take advantage of those opportunities and score in the red zone so no SEC team has allowed opponents to convert their red zone chances like A&M has. Again, 14 of 16 trips have been converted into points once the teams have gotten into the red zone. So yes, they make it hard, but once you get there, statistics show you have a good chance of scoring. So if you're LSU, you have that in mind, you get there, you turn it into points. And I think any points in this game are going to be huge. I think it's going to be a close game uh, for the teams who are you know, who anytime you're given an opportunity to score, you better take advantage of it because I, I think that uh, I think that's kind of the game that that we're going to see. It, it could be a little bit of a shootout. One element of that too, Damian Ramos, their kicker, has hit all 25 yeah. extra points in his 12 of 14 on field goals, which is really good. Now he's not tried one over 50, but he's five of six from 30 to 39, 40 to 49. He's five of six. So meaning, once they get in the red zone and they kick it, he's automatic. Yeah, that's that's another big thing too. Like again, you want to score points. However, you can get them in a game like this. You want to put points up. So once you get there, do what you can to convert them into points. All right, key number two: run the ball, which LSU has done fairly well lately. I mean, it's been kind of a committee approach. Sometimes it's been Josh Williams. Of course, it was John Emery Jr. to start the year before the injury, and and now Caden Durham has really come on strong, averaging 6.2 yards per carry. He can bust one at any time. He's got a long of 86, and he's got six scores. This is a really, really tough front seven, probably a top-10 unit in the country. But LSU, though, has been very consistent in moving the ball and running the ball. Chase, just some overall offensive stats and, and rushing, of course, plays into this. LSU, though, getting 4.9 yards per rushing play. That takes – uh, lost yardage from sacks out of it, which, of course, LSU almost never gets sacked. So that's not a big factor. But you, you just look at this offensive consistency. LSU has been 382 yards or more in every game. The, the 382 was Nickel State uh, in a game that they knew they were going to win, except for the Arkansas game last week when they had 297. But that's a game where they had a 3 nothing turnover edge, and I think that the stats played to, to the turnovers, if that makes sense. This is an offense that's been very hard to stop, and one of the reasons has been that offensive line and, and the talents of guys like Durham that run behind them. Yeah, you know, I was wondering when John Emery went out, kind of who they would lean on running the football, because I really liked him and what mm -hmm. I saw from him first of the season. But yeah, Caden Durham's kind of been that guy. And when you look at AM defensively, yes, they have a really good pass rush, but they are allowing over 116 uh, rushing yards per game, which is 36th the most in the country, 11th most in the SEC. And so I think that's something that LSU can kind of poke at a little bit and, and get these offensive linemen creating some holes and, and establishing the run early. I think that's going to be really big for for LSU in this game, if you can kind of wear down the, the defense starting the game and, and, and running the football, I think that'll be huge. But I, I kind of feel like AM has defended the pass better than the run so far, and just from what I've yeah. seen from the Aggies. So I think that'll be big for LSU to just run the football right at them and again to get that established early and uh and early and often in this game with, with AM. Yeah, I think your gut instinct is correct. Uh, teams have run the ball on AM. What, 45% of the time, 4.0 yards per rushing play. Again, that sack adjusted. The average for the league is 4.1. So as good as this AM defense has been, it's been 
just kind of okay against the run. So I, I think that is a big key. Before we get into key number three, I want to tell you about our presenting sponsor, Bet Online. It is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything online sports betting, every stat, matchup, breakdown, even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games, including this one, which I think is a, a three point game as we're doing this Thursday morning or in the ballpark of that. So if you want to wager on AM LSU, you can certainly do that at Bet Online. It's got the world's largest catalog of odds on everything from football. MLB playoffs, NHL, NBA, two political props. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino. Get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of over 150 slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online. The game starts here. All right, key number three, stop the run. a and has got a really good rushing offense. Le'Veon Moss has been just a – a holy terror to try to contain. AM runs at 61% of offensive snaps, 5.7 yards per rushing play. I think that is the second best average in the league behind, well, third best behind Auburn, and then a tie for second between um, Georgia and Tennessee, and, and then AM, I think. But um, excuse me, not Georgia, somebody else. But it, here's the point one of the top rushing attacks in the league and they run it more percentage wise than almost anybody. You kind of know what's coming at you and, and now it's up to LSU to stop it. Yeah. This has got to be the game plan for, for A&M. Let's get Moss established early running the football. Yeah. Uh, Texas A&M is in the top 15 uh, for rushing offenses in the country uh, in all of college football. And so uh, they like to run the ball. They're really good at it. Again, their offensive line does a good job of, of creating holes and and uh, so I feel like if you're LSU, uh, make them pass. Like put put pressure on you need of, of of what you need up front. Stop the run. Make them pass. They're statistically, like Chris was reading, better at running the football than they are passing. And so uh, we talked about LSU needs to run the ball. Well, they need to stop the run when it comes to Texas A&M because that's where the Aggies get dangerous. And that's where they've had a lot of success this year is when Moss and these backs are able to consistently run the ball uh, for A&M. So I think that has to be a game plan defensively for LSU. Stop the run and uh, make them uncomfortable, make them pass the ball and put them in situations where uh, where, where they can't run because I think that's where you can exploit Texas A&M the most. Yeah, LSU has given up 804 rushing yards, which on paper is pretty good. Now, here's the issue. They've got 163 sack yards on 24 sacks. So that really adjusts the run numbers on paper. When you adjust for that, LSU is giving up five yards flat per carry. Teams in the league that are worse against the, the true running plays, Mississippi State at 5.1, and that's it. So I, I think that's going to be a big key for LSU as the Aggies have a chance to hit them where they're weak. But, but I think a and also got a lot of things that can give – Excuse me, I think LSU's also got a lot of things to give A&M problems. So interesting matchup for us as, as we look forward to watching this one Saturday, Chase. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Like I think it's two really good teams, two teams that are playing really good football right now. And uh, and, and we're going to see that Saturday when they meet up at 6.30 on ABC. We'll be here to wrap it up on Saturday night as we do our, our live wrap-up show every Saturday night as these games are winding down. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and enable your notifications so you know when we do that. We also cover basketball and baseball out of season. If you want to advertise, we reach millions of people a year. Caroline.Smith at southeastern14.com. For Chase Robinson, I'm Chris Lee. You've been watching Southeastern 16 presented by Bet Online.